this video, you'll witness white African food in the country of South Africa. This is one of those moments I'm having where I love it, but it makes me sad because I'm never gonna find this species of sheep cooked in this way again. This is really top level. But first, let's back up. South Africa is a complicated and diverse country with four ethnic groups, multiple tribes, and 11 official languages. These days, about 8-9% to 9 of the country's population is made up of white South Africans, most of whom descended from the original Dutch colonists who went on to be known as Afrikaners. Today, I'll be joining Afrikaner Herman on his farm. You see that piece of fat? Does that fat protect you from like a hangover? No. Is that science? Nothing's wrong. <laughs> his family has been in South Africa for five generations. I gotta say, the place you have here is gorgeous. Even just the view from here is stunning. I'm on a mission to witness the unique food contributions of the Afrikaner people. And is this a pretty traditional way of cooking? Yes, yeah. Uh, most of the Sundays we do it because then you've got time. This is a uh, time consuming. And to learn how Dutch cooking methods and recipes came to fuse with new ingredients in a completely new land. I'll keep taking more if you're going to keep cutting it. <laughs> it all starts with breakfast. Right now, Cher, the lady of the house, is preparing a protein-packed breakfast. But there's a twist. Mm. Her omelets aren't stuffed with ham or bacon, rather a sheep organ. Organ, I'm not used to eating this early in the morning. Fresh kidneys extracted just moments ago from a merino sheep. This is a dual purpose breed, producing high quality wool and plenty of delicious meat. first imported into South Africa from Europe in 1932. A move the wild jackals here absolutely adored. The kidney is chopped into palatable pieces, seasoned with salt and pepper, then rolled in flour. Our second early morning offal, sheep's liver. Also sliced into small bits and rolled in flour. In a frying pan, add onions, liver, kidney, chopped green pepper, and South Africa's favorite flavor enhancer, Miss Ball's Chutney. She cracks her eggs, whisks, seasons, and fries. The rest of the sheep will be used soon, but first, breakfast. Well, good morning. Good morning. This looks fantastic. This is an omelet, but not just any type of omelet. It's an omelet filled with kidneys. Kidney, sheep yeah. kidney, a bit of uh, Mrs. Ball's chutney. Ball's chutney? It's Mrs. Balls. a Mrs. Ball's chutney. I think I'm hearing that word wrong. Not testicles, right? No. no. <laughs> How do you spell balls? It's B-I-L-L-S. Yeah. Oh, it's the same balls, <laughs> but a different type of chutney. <laughs> yes. On the side, this is pop, right? Yes. Pop, a staple food in many parts of South Africa. Here, they prepare a drier version, served with tomato stew, made fresh from the farm. Oh yeah, that's delicious. It tastes like a tomato paste kind of flavor, but with texture. And the pop has a feeling of Parmesan cheese, yeah, but yes. not the taste. If you eat this porridge, you're fine for the day. I can't wait to dig into this omelet. This omelet is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cut a big piece of that. Oh, this is delicious. The kidney, I thought it would be a little bit more gamey or very minerally, but it's almost like there's something sweet in here too. That's a bit of a chutney. Yeah. The egg is beautifully cooked and that pairs perfectly with this organ meat. Really delicious. So I'm very curious, the Dutch came here long ago, and at some point the Dutch just became Afrikaner people. Do you know when that happened? 1652, a couple of years after that, because Jan van Ribia came to South Africa and he stayed here. Yeah, but they still spoke Dutch then for quite a bit. Yeah. I think when Grafnet was formed in 18 something, the people started speaking Afrikaans. So Afrikaans came... With the time. Yeah, with the time, yeah. My mission today is just to learn more about Afrikaner people and the food culture of the Afrikaner people and to see how maybe it's influenced some other foods here in South Africa. Most of the things that the Dutch people started when they came here, we are still making it at this stage. You know, just maybe we've got better equipment to do it and so on. So today, the sheep has been dispatched already? Yes. Part of it's here? Yes. Now here? Yes. Yeah. What else are we going to do with that sheep today? We're going to cut the shanks up and we're going to put it in the poiki with a bit of veggies on and a bit of curry in. And then we're also going to cut the one drop off 
and put it on the fire. That's also like a braai. And then we're going to do the offal. That's a tripe, part of the jaws. And we're going to also put it in the pot. So you eat everything. Yeah, we do eat it. All right, we got a lot of work to do. Yes, we have. Thank you for breakfast. Let's get to it. Van der Volzo. That's the name of Herman's farm, and it's been running for generations, ever since the 1860s. He specializes in raising merino sheep and cattle, but in the wild, you'll find a vast array of plants and animals, from tortoises to kudu. I'll be trying one of those soon. Sir, what is this called again? Oh, the poiki. Poiki? Oh, yeah. Where does that name come from? I've got no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> poiki is a round cast iron three-legged cauldron. It's descended from the Dutch oven, brought from the Netherlands to South Africa ages ago. Is this also a way that you would still cook day to day or just for special occasions? It's used for cooking poikikos, literally meaning small pot food, a traditional Afrikaner preparation made outdoors. I'd say the Sundays we do, because then you've got time. This is a time consuming. It takes about three hours, not less. Than. Right now, he's doing up lamb shank poiki ghost. Add olive oil, onions, green and yellow peppers, garlic cloves, and then the lamb shanks. For the seasoning, a secret sauce, the chutney, and a bit of mixed seasoning from the grocery store. Finally, add some water and let those tough shanks simmer for hours. I'm so curious about the sheep because even just driving to your home today, I saw monkeys, I saw a turtle. I mean, it looked vicious, so. That's big one. And uh, yeah, big one. <laughs> My thought was just, there must be a number of animals out there that compete with the sheep. Uh, if you farm a sheep, you have to check them every week. You have to shift them to certain camps. If you've got something competing, like the jackal that catches it, then you have to work on it. In the country these sheep originally came from, they didn't have to worry about jackal attacks. Here, they do. As much as the jackals love the juicy, easy to catch prey, attacks like these are a big problem for farmers here, especially when the predators lack wild prey. So how do you work on a jackal? Oh, that's nighttime shooting now. Okay. It's most of the time, yeah. yeah. After the poiki simmers for 30 minutes, toss in potatoes, carrots, zucchini, and pumpkin. Then a final flavor blend of curry powder, salt, chutney sauce, and water. Leave it to simmer. What are some of the different types of meat that you eat here outside of the typical, you know, beef, pork, chicken? Spring muck. Could we eat a lot? It's actually such a healthy food. And it's organic. You never feed them or never give them anything. It's a meat that is very good, yeah. What about when you're making biltong? What animal is best for making biltong? Uh, could we? Really? As I said, it's got a very nice smelling meat. It works nice. It makes beautiful biltong. Can we see where you make the biltong? Yes, we can. Let's go. Kudu. They consist of two species of spiral horned antelopes. The lesser kudu and the greater kudu, which grow up to five feet at the shoulder. It's common for game hunters to track kudu as trophies, but also for their deep red, clean tasting meat. Heck, in South Africa, you can even find kudu in grocery stores. Boom. Biltong, right here you have a fresh batch of the raw meat. Yes. What part of the kudu is best to use? The back straps, and then also your hind hind quarters. And the others you make sausage. The kudu meat is first cut into strips. Size can vary as long as the meat isn't too thick. What is absolutely required for it to be called biltong? Because most people from Minnesota would just call this jerky. The basic salt and pepper, brown vinegar, and then you've got biltong. Vinegar, more specifically brown vinegar, is a key differentiating ingredient separating biltong from jerky. In his marination vessel, he adds a layer of vinegar, then biltong spices, then kudu strips. Add even more vinegar and more spices on top. The key is to let the vinegar soak into the meat for hours. The biltong, do you know how far this goes back? Oh, no. I think the first people that shot the first animal must have made biltong. So biltong is very old. Biltong comes from the Dutch words bil, meaning meat, and tong, meaning strip. But preserving meat far predates the arrival of the Dutch. Native African tribes were curing meat in salt as early as the 1600s. Vinegar was later introduced by European settlers who arrived to South Africa in the 1800s. The result is a dried but semi-soft meat absolutely packed with flavor. Can I try some on? Yes, yeah. How long has this been hanging here? It's six days. This, this has only been here six days. Yes. And it's completely dry. Maybe like a tiny bit of moisture on the inside. That's nice. It does feel a bit different from jerky. Traditional jerky that I've had before can just be so hard and you're like really wringing your teeth, like crunching on it, trying to hydrate it with your own spit. And this is not like that. It's much more soft. It's very enjoyable. And then inside, you can feel the fatty oils. And some people like it the way it is now. And some people hang it that it gets very dry, like a jerky. But this is the best. And you've got a beer, yeah. hotong and beer. Yeah, that seems perfect. I'll keep taking more if you're gonna keep cutting it. <laughs> 
The preparation for our final meal is already underway. Cher and a small army of cooks prepare the sides, while Herman tends to the meat, including this. Let's call it an appetizer, cooked up Afrikaner style. Boom. Okay, time for barbecue. What are you putting on right now? This is a uh, fat of the stomach. We call it net fat. Skilpaiki is a traditional Afrikaner recipe combining lamb's liver and call fat, the fatty membrane that surrounds the sheep's internal organs. Start with call fat and sliced red pepper on top. Add a bit of onion puree, then put the liver on top of the coal fat. Add a bit of barbecue seasoning before holding it in place with a toothpick. Now, they're ready to hit the grill. How do you know when it's done? If I get a bit hotter, okay. you can feel him. They're not jumpy anymore. Are you trying to get it well or just maybe no, medium? No, it must be just under medium. It's been a couple minutes here. They're looking good. I like the call fat. As it cooks, it kind of tightens up and wraps tighter around the liver. I can't wait to try this out. This one looks really good. Oh, yeah. It looks like a thin piece of melted mozzarella. Wow. This is one of the best pieces of liver I've ever had. You see that piece of fat? You don't have to yeah. eat it if you want to. You can put it No, I want to. But it's so soft. The fat from the coal fat is so juicy. And we South Africans also do it because it gives you a lining in your stomach before you start drinking or farting. It's good for you. Does that fat protect you from like a hangover? No. Oh yeah? Is that science? I think so. It almost tastes like eating a big burger patty, like a beef patty. And the seasonings you put on there are so lovely. And also fresh liver. If you put your liver the next day, it does not taste the same as the day that you saw it. I love it. I'm curious, and maybe this is a strange question. Do you see yourself more as South African or Afrikaner? Coming to that question, we are all South African. We come out of the Afrikaner background, but I mean, at this stage, we South African. Yeah, and have you felt that way your whole life? Oh, yes, yeah. All right, fantastic. This is our appetizer. Now we just need beer <laughs> and the rest of the food. Our final epic meal will consist of four meat dishes, all made from different parts of the Merino sheep. I want to say thank you to both of you just for having me in your home, but allowing me to experience foods like these. Everything looks outstanding. Where should we start? The first plate here, it's a pof adder. Pof adder is a traditional South African type of sausage, usually made from the organs of a sheep. All right, so he's pulled out the pocket knife, and then he just goes for big chunks. Thank you, that's beautiful. They start by chopping the liver, heart, and lungs into smaller pieces. So this is interesting, because it is just really big chunks of meat. Mix it with red pepper, lemon juice, mashed onion, barbecue spice, salt, and pepper. This evenly mixed blend is ready to head inside the sheep's intestine. Once finished, it's time to hit the grill. Oh, this is delicious. It just tastes like that rye type seasoning. Yes, yeah. And then the outside, because it's just grilled for a short time, so the intestine is still really juicy and fatty, similar to the call fat around the liver. Mm. What else do we have here? This yeah. is our pot. Yeah. In a similar poiki pot, add olive oil and onions, then sheep tripe and cheeks. This would typically be the main course. Yeah. Hit it with garlic cloves and bicarbonate soda to kill any tripe gaminess. Close the lid and let it cook. Usually farm people, they like offal. Yes. So when you're visiting a farm, the first thing they ask you, do you eat offal? After a bit, add curry powder and potatoes. For that final flavor punch, a blend of curry powder, salt, chutney sauce, and water. I'm not gonna take a lot. Ooh. And then maybe help yourself to a pumpkin cake. Do you put butter or jam or just eat it straight up? It is straight up, yeah. Okay. Combine eggs, mashed pumpkin, baking powder, salt, and flour. Fry the batter in sizzling hot oil until it's crispy. Oh, oh, I'm in love. Finally, sprinkle a bit of sugar on top. It's simple, it's sweet, it's perfect. That's really nice. Sweet and then really rich, just like delicious fried bread, some nice pumpkin flavor in there. Where did you learn these recipes? Pumpkin cake is an old uh, recipe right. and it's very easy. All these recipes come from our grandmothers. It's not a new recipe. Well, let's pair that with some stomach. Mm. It's very chewy, but the thick curry comes through. A little bit of kick, like a little spicy. I think it takes a bit of the fried taste away. Yeah, you don't want it to be too gamey, and then it goes so well with the pumpkin cake. Mm. You were growing up as a sheep farmer. Yeah, we were sheep farmers, and we've gone over to cattle farm. How often were you eating sheep? Every day, morning, afternoon, and night. Yeah. And you're not sick of it? I don't think sheep you'll get sick of it. There's so many ways to prepare a lamb. So you can make a chop, you can make a leg, you can dry it, you can pot it, you can do whatever you want. That's a great point. This is course one, let's do course two. Yes. If you're looking for diversity in your sheep meat preparation, try this, grilled sheep ribs. Is this normal weather? Normal weather. 
the weather, it's like violent rain sometimes here. Well, as long as you're dry, it's very nice. Yeah. So I think we're okay right yes, now. Yes. Here, we have the whole rib section of the sheep all just grilled by the fire. Yes, yes. The meat is scored to better allow his barbecue sauce and local seasonings to soak in. Oh, that is crispy. Thank you. Then, aim those ribs straight for the fire, roasting slowly until they're cooked through. I feel like I'm trying all the greatest hits today. There's no way you would make this much food in one day, would you? So I'm gonna open up these ribs. Oh, wow. This is delicious. The skin, like it is almost flaky on the outside, like a croissant. And just looking at it, I thought, no way. This is gonna be a little bit dry. It's not dry. It's got real good texture. And then it's just so nice and juicy on the inside. And you know, you must have a nice fatty rib. Never buy a lean rib. This is one of those moments I'm having where I love it, but it makes me sad because I'm never gonna find this species of sheep cooked in this way again. This is really top level. Well, let's talk about this right here. Our final dish of the day, lamb shank poikikos. Stew over the fire since this morning. Now, it's finally ready to eat. This looks incredible. Should we try it out? Yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You can see some of the meat and skin is already falling off the bone. Yes, as soon as it comes off the bone, then you know it, it is perfect. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. Soft, but not too soft. It still has some bite to it. The sheep seems to be naturally sweet, but of course there's a sweetness from the yeah. balls as well. Such a nice pairing of really savory, fatty, deep, delicious flavor, and just really tender meat. Yes, but I just want to say yeah. why we do it this way. We actually do it also as a Sunday lunch. You just put everything in the pot. There's actually no work. Nobody has to sit, stand around and, and do exactly. Right, it just takes time, but not a lot of effort. No. no. Just gotta make sure the jackals don't get it. Yes, yes, yes. That's so, it. So, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, well done. Just riding from Johannesburg to here, I can see South Africa is a vast, wide-ranging country. A country that means so much to different people. So I want to ask both of you, what do you love about South Africa and being South African? The friendly people, the families that come together, rise on weekends. We like the social. That's something you don't see in every country. Yeah, I think we've got the open spaces. Also, your weather is nice. We've got the sea, we've got the inland, we've got beautiful rainforest. As a South African, you've got an option of doing Anything. And we've got a lot of animals. Yeah, and you get to eat some of them too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. What's on top of here? This looks yeah. like salsa. Oh, yeah. That is all the tomatoes from the farm. And we put in there a little bit of onions and pepper. Also a little bit of chutney. What kind of chutney? Mrs. Paul's. Oh, I love that kind. <laughs> Sorry, it's my new favorite chutney. <laughs> yes. Can it be any animal protein? Yes. Can you do it with beef? Yes. Uh, how about chicken? No, I want the chicken. No, okay, I'm sorry, that was a tough question. No, no, no. Duck? Are you hungry? Did you have a real breakfast before this fake uh, no, no, video no, breakfast? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, yeah. No, no, no. Did you shoot this kudu? Yes, I shot it. Nice. Does it taste a little bit better since you shot it yourself? It always tastes better, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that is the end of video number three here in South Africa. From here, it is about to get insane. Here's a quick preview. Oh, okay. Turns out the editor did not have time to make a preview, but just take my word for it, it's about to get insane. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Hope oh, All right, kudu steaks. I'm gonna put a kudu in a crock pot. It's gonna be delicious. But first, I'm gonna contemplate life in the rain.